To Rebelpreneur Radio, helping you break the rules and build the business you need for the life you want. And now, broadcasting his pirate signal from somewhere beyond the status quo. Here's your host, best selling author, marketing and media strategist, Ralph Brogdon. Hello and welcome to Rebelpreneur Radio. It's the show that helps you build the business you need so you can live the life you want. I'm Ralph Brogdon. Do you ever get tongue tied when someone asks you, So, what do you do? What do you do? And if you're like a lot of people, if you haven't given thought to that in advance, you're liable to spit out something that you haven't really given a lot of consideration to. And a lot of people get stuck uh, giving out the name of their company or they just are so generic. You know, I'm, I'm a life coach. I'm an attorney. And there's a better way to present yourself so that it's memorable to people when they ask you, what do you do? Now, we have an expert on the show today who is a specialist in creating these magical formulas for your 20-word introduction. She's going to show show you how to be clear, concise, and memorable when you answer that instead of getting all tongue-tied, flustered, and forgettable. I'm speaking with Kimberly Hopscheid, she is an award-winning international inspirational public speaker, a best-selling author, audiobook producer, a six-time entrepreneur. She is the creator of Entrepreneur's Rocket Fuel, an active community of entrepreneurs looking to contribute, connect, and grow with other entrepreneurs. Her vision is to inspire all entrepreneurs to achieve their genius in whatever way that is. So she is a good fit for Rebelpreneur Radio. Uh, Kimberly, welcome. Thank you so much, Ralph. It's a pleasure to be here. How are you doing today? I am doing super D duper. I don't have a single complaint. Um, (laughs) I love that answer. That's awesome. (laughs) You are the creator of Entrepreneur's Rocket Fuel. So you are all about getting some results and getting things launched out into space and Mm In, into orbit instead of sitting around on the launch pad just talking about it. Uh, so I really love that concept. I love that brand and that name. Tell us a little bit before we get into what you do, and I'm going to ask you that same question. Um, what do you do? First, tell us about yourself. How did you get started in this? Sure. Um, so my name is Kimberly. I help authors create audiobooks and generate new streams of revenue and get to a wider audience in one of my businesses. In another business, I help entrepreneurs grow and connect with other entrepreneurs so that their business can be fun and enjoyable and also drive revenue. Um, I have I have sold three of my businesses, and right now I'm uh, actually starting to work on a new passion project around young adults and travel. So I've got a lot of different f- sort of fingers in the pie, but one of the things that um, I wanted to share with your audience today was about how to introduce yourself when somebody asks you, so what do you do? Yeah, because I think a lot of people, as I said in the intro, they get they shouldn't be but they get caught off guard and and it's like um uh, uh well uh I, i'm a i'm a business owner i'm an entrepreneur and it's and they stumble over that and so the solution for years has been what they call the elevator speech but oh, what yeah. i have found is people go through that elevator speech creation process is that sometimes that elevator doesn't go all the way to the top floor <laughs> It just doesn't Very work. good point. <laughs> Very good point, Ralph. So how, what I, should we be doing? Well, that's a really good question. So um, I consider this piece uh, as an entrepreneur. One of the things that we have to do as entrepreneurs is get out there and get our message out, right? Yes. And part of that is going to networking events and introducing yourself clearly and concisely anytime somebody says, so what do you do? But because we are so close and attached to what I call our magic trick or our service or product that we offer that we're, you know, we're really good at, we're very attached to it and very close to it. So we, we don't describe it well to other people who aren't that close to it. And I found that when I went to networking events, I got one of three answers. 
to the question, so what do you do? And I would get one, which would be, well, I, I do a lot of things, <laughs> right? That's number one. Well, that's and real that's clear. that's <laughs> so painful because um, it doesn't help you at all, right? It doesn't get you any further in the conversation. It was just a waste of space. So it doesn't help the person really understand you at all. And you're saying it because you're thinking, I do do a lot of things and I don't know where to start with this person. Mm. And that comes through in that statement. The second one is, um, I think, it's, it's meant well, but it is designed to hook somebody and bring them into the conversation and it's nebulous. So you'll find people who say, well, I help people achieve their dreams. Mm. Okay. Well, <laughs> yes. And right. Like, okay, <laughs> thanks. But I still know nothing. Right. <laughs> I mean, that, that, you, you could be a drug dealer, right? Exactly. I mean, who knows? Well, there you go. There you go. But I think people say that with good intention because they're like, I don't want to give them too much, but I don't want to turn them off. And I want them to ask me more. So they feel like they're involved in the conversation. <laughs> but if you think of being on the other side of that argument, it's just, it's like you are afraid to ask because now you're going to get that third thing. <laughs> and that third thing is the elevator pitch or the fire hose, as I like to call it, right? <laughs> so it's a pre-practiced one to five minute hosing of information that's just going to pour out on you whether you want it or not. And there's no breath to interrupt anybody, right? Because <laughs> it's all <laughs> rehearsed and it goes on and on and on. And that can be really painful to listen to. Yeah. Now, you'll notice that I actually call it a 20-word intro not a 20 second intro or God forbid a 20 minute intro. <laughs> I call it a 20 word intro because I think entrepreneurs with that elevator speech try to rush and stuff as much as they can into one minute or 30 seconds or whatever they think that elevator pitch should be. And they talk so fast that nobody can really get it anyway. Hmm. So 20 words is about what the human brain can hold at a time. It's actually closer to 17. So keep in mind that when you do 20, people are going to be throwing words out anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's based on brain science and it gives them the four pieces of information that you really need when you are asking this. And it's based on what you're ready to receive and when you're ready to receive it. Okay. So shall we dump, jump into it? Absolutely. I'd like to know okay. what those four things are. Awesome. So the first one is your first two words. And the first word is I'm, I apostrophe M, I'm, because it's only one word. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm, and the second word is your first name. Don't even bother with your second name. Second names are really good after you introduce each other or maybe when you pass a business card. But people hang, really try hard to hang on to your first name, Ralph. They don't have time to remember the second one. Like my mm. last name is just, you did a beautiful job introducing me, but my last name is Hobshite. It's very difficult to remember. People will, leave, you know, they're going to discard it as quickly as possible because they're just going to want to hang on to something they can remember, which is Kimberly or Kim or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so if you can give them something short to remember in those first two words, they'll try to hang on to that for you. So that's the first thing about being memorable is give them what they need when they need it in as short a, a version as they need it. Mm -hmm. So the first two words are I'm Kimberly. The next is the brain science. The first thing that people want to know is what your name is. And after that, they want to know, can you help me personally? Yes. Like, am I your target market? Am I the person that can be helped by you? Uh, they just want to, everybody at the networking event wants to know that, like, who do you help? So the next thing that you want to do is have two to three words and I'm going to say that again, two to three words, maybe even one, that describe your target market. Now, this is not um, busy entrepreneurs between the ages of 33 and 65. <laughs> it's, not, it's not that at all. It's <clears throat> on, women entrepreneurs or uh, 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 mature entrepreneurs or millennial entrepreneurs or something like that. You or can it, also it could say- be like startup. A, a startup sure. companies or something. Sure. Or it could be business owners. That's two words, right? Mm -hmm. So you want something nice and tight that they can say, yes, I'm that. And they would raise their hand. Yes, I'm that, right? But you also want them to be able to identify it if it's not them, if they know somebody who's that. Mm. 
So don't say uh, cerebrally minded spiritual seekers, <laughs> because <laughs> if I'm not one, I don't know who to introduce you to. Right. Mm. So you have to say somebody you have to say something that that people can identify themselves or their brother and their neighbor are one. Right? This is so, so good, Kimberly, because yeah. with, with a lot of people and I see this uh, not even getting into trying to uh, communicate this in person. Uh, just looking at web copy, when, oh, yeah. they, when they get to this part right here of who do you help, they can't just say small businesses or millennial yeah. entrepreneurs or startup companies. Mm-hmm. I work with authors, teachers, speakers, uh, seminar leaders, experts, uh, people mm-hmm. in, in the blah, 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 and it, because mm-hmm. they think if I leave somebody out, God forbid, they're not going to know that I can help them. So I've got to tell this person, everybody yes. that I've ever worked with and yeah. who I could potentially work with. And you end up with a list that's 20, 20 words all by itself or more, and no one remembers anything about it. That's just as bad yeah. as as leading them on in kind of a nebulous way. It's, it's too much. I couldn't agree more. And as a matter of fact, the reverse turns out to be the truth. So if I tell you I work with women entrepreneurs and then I go on to tell you what I do with them. Even though you're a male entrepreneur, you might think, well, gosh, can you help me too? That's you always might the first thing I ask. In, yeah. Right? <laughs> like you might actually be able to say, well, I know I'm not your target market, but c- could you help me? Right. It's like the spine specialist or somebody who's a chiropractor and they say, I specialize in spines. And they say, okay, well, that's great, but I have the shoulder thing. Can you just tell me what's going on with it? You know, mm. um, because they know you're an expert, right? You're, you're and actually just, helping them to qualify themselves to you. Yes. Yes. And, and believe me, when I say, uh, my first statement used to be, I help published authors um, with the audiobooks, right? So I help publish authors. And some people would come up to me and they'd say, I want to write a book. Can you help me too? Right. right? They're not a published author, but they're going to try to talk to me anyway, because now they know what I have to offer, mm. which you have to get to that next part. But, but screening people out doesn't actually screen people out. It focuses their brain so they know your specialty, but it, but they will still think broader than that because they, human beings generally want to help you if you don't confuse them. Mm. And that's the key. Just don't confuse them. And then they'll want to help you. Now, every once in a while, you'll have somebody say, well, I'm not a woman. So clearly they're not going to help me, you know, or whatever. And that's fine. Um, but they may not be your target market anyway. Right. So right. don't worry about that. Um, just make sure that you, that you stay, stay somewhat niched, but not too niched. Mm-hmm. And and don't don't help everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is so. such good advice right there. I, I can see already we've got value here because we're not overwhelming people. We're not confusing them. Uh, we're actually making it very easy for them to imagine working with us if they are, in fact, somewhere in our zone of competency or, or yes. even anywhere close. So, so that makes a lot of sense. What's the third one? So the third one is actually most people go right to their magic trick, which is their product or service, how they help people. But it's not actually what you want to receive next. Uh, When you're listening to somebody and they say, I help women entrepreneurs, and I raise my hand and think in my own brain, oh, I'm a woman entrepreneur. What can he do for me? What you actually want to know is not what you do to me. It's what what I would get from working with you. Mm -hmm. So it's what's my result. So think of your magic trick, whatever you offer, it's a product or a service of some kind. What do the people get as a result of that? So for mine, for audiobooks, it would be, I help authors get wider streams of revenue and a a larger audience. Hmm. That's what you get by working with me, right? right? So the next thing you want to know is, is what do I get if I work with them? So your next thing is actually your benefit or your results, and that's about five words. Somewhere in the neighborhood of five words is a good amount of words to use for this, maybe five to seven. This is probably the meat and potatoes of it, believe it or not, not your product or service. I love that. You know, when you go now, on the when you go on the web and, and digital agencies are the worst at this, you ask them what do they do? And they give you they want to talk about their process, right? Yes. Oh, our yep. process. First <clears throat> we sit down and we have yep. a we have a discovery phase with you and, and mm-hmm. then we then we design and then we build and then we launch. And, but it's the same process. There's nothing d- distinctive 
about their process because every agency pretty much does it the same way. And, and so, even if you think you have a magic trick that's different than other people's magic trick, nobody really cares until they know <laughs> what they're going to get from it. Exactly. So that's, I, I couldn't agree more, Ralph. You're, you're exactly on it. And the last piece is going to be that you're going to tell them what you do. You're going to get a chance to tell them that because that's the fourth piece is your magic trick. And that should be somewhere in the neighborhood of somewhere between one and four words, but do not make it seven to 12 words of your 20 word intro. It's <laughs> because honestly, people don't care. I used to call it, I still call it the 20 point check right? Mm. So you have a 20 point checklist and you know, it's going to save the world. And it's the best 20 point checklist that was ever involved, ever <laughs> invented. But if you talk about your 20 point checklist, nobody cares until they know what it, they can get out of it. Right? So you, I, I, I hate to break that to entrepreneurs because we're so close to it and we know it's so powerful, right. but you can't talk about it until you tell people what they do. So <laughs> We're going to do yours in just a second. I'll give you some time to think about those four pieces. The first one is your name. So you should have that. The first word is I'm and then your first name. So you should have that one pretty easily. Yeah. And then your niche in two to three words. And then the benefits in five to seven words. And then your magic trick in somewhere around one to four words. And the rest of it sort of fills in the blanks. You use things like I help. And you say things like, and, and you add some filler words in there, but you're trying to get to stay around 20 words. Why? Because we're only going to remember 17 and we're already throwing some out anyway. They might as well, you might as well give them a, a chance at hanging on to something good. I love that. So, so for mine, it, for my audiobooks company, and I have another company I want to talk about, which helps entrepreneurs, but this, it's so simple to talk about the audiobooks one. Cause it's really fun. People understand it. So I'm Kimberly. I help authors generate new streams of revenue and get to a wider audience by creating audiobooks. Now that's clear, it's concise, and it's memorable. It most if, certainly is. I, I mean, that's the best one I've heard in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But it also feeds you the information in the way that you're about that you're wanting to receive it. Now imagine if somebody told you and they were selling um, like uh, if they, uh, if somebody came to you and they said, I'm Ralph, I help, uh, women in their thirties get back into their genes before they were pregnant. <laughs> the next question you're going to think of is like, what is he going to do to me? Am I going to have to take pills? Am I going to have to work out all the time? Am I going to have to eat expensive food? Am I going to have to deprive myself? You really do want to know what the magic trick is at the end, mm -hmm. but you don't want to know until you get your result. So that's the order your brain's ready to receive the information. Does that make sense? It makes absolute sense. And, okay. and I think this is really, really powerful and very helpful, especially as cool. we have so many different uh, entrepreneurs, business owners struggling with messaging and trying to, trying to nail that down. And they make it way more complicated than it needs to be. So you have really laid out a, a very nice path uh, for us. Um, how can people get in touch with you, Kimberly, if they want to find out more about this and more about um, Entrepreneur's Rocket Fuel and the other things that you have going on? Excellent question. So we actually have a Facebook group called Entrepreneur's Rocket Fuel, and it's free to join. Uh, we're actually launching a really cool mastermind in the coming year that's going to be called bliss quest and we're going to make the fun back we're going to bring the fun back into your entrepreneurship i the reason i actually wanted to come on your show is because of your tagline which is live the life you want and build the business you need that's and it. that is what this is going to be about it's going to be about how to create your business in and build it around what you need in order to live the fun, joyful, blissful life that you really, really want. So if you go to entrepreneursrocketfuel.com forward slash bliss quest, you can fill out an application and we'll tell you all about the bliss quest and how it's going to unfold in the coming year. Um, but if you want to go to entrepreneurs rocket fuel on Facebook, we'd love to have you as a community member as well. Excellent. Excellent. Well, th this has really uh, helped, I think, to clarify exactly what your audience is looking for so that you don't waste a lot of time uh, beating around the bush, giving people a disguised sales pitch, mm -hmm. which is, which is not so disguised because it's very clear. It, it's too clever uh, to be, to be authentic. So I really love this magic formula to 
make your 20 word intro clear, concise, and memorable. If, um, if you're struggling with that, then check this out, entrepreneursrocketfuel.com and find out more about, um, all the other support and programs and things that Kimberly has available for you. I feel like we just got into this and um, <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited to, uh, to make this connection with you, Kimberly. Any final thoughts or words of wisdom you'd like to share with our listeners as we call it a wrap? Absolutely. So my motto is done is better than perfect. So it, go ahead and, and put together a 20 word intro, try it out at your next networking event, see how it lands with people. If somebody else can re- remember it and repeat it to somebody else and say, Hey, there's a chick who does audiobooks, you know, <laughs> then you know, you won, right? So, um, try it out, uh, learn by doing, uh, get out there and get your message out because if you are not being seen, you're being overlooked. And if you're not being heard, your message is not going to get out there. And there you have it. I've been speaking with Kimberly Hobscheid. She is an award-winning international inspirational public speaker, a best-selling author, audiobook producer, and a six-time entrepreneur who is the creator of Entrepreneur's Rocket Fuel, an active community of entrepreneurs looking to contribute, connect, and grow with other entrepreneurs. Check that out at entrepreneursrocketfuel.com or look it up on Facebook and join that group. And, um, Get some rocket fuel in your business. Kimberly, it's been a real pleasure to have you on Rebelpreneur Radio today. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us. My pleasure, Ralph. It's been a joy. You've been listening to Rebelpreneur Radio with Ralph Brogdon. Download the show notes and much more at rebelpreneur.com.